Hi, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're here to talk about the Dell Precision 5820 workstation and specifically we're going to focus on drives. Let's get going. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by today to learn a little bit more about the Dell Precision 5820 Tower Workstation, also known as the T5820. Do us a favor, if you find anything that helps you in this video, click that like and smash that subscribe. All right, we'll top in. Uh, this video, what we are going to do is we are going to go over um, all the different storage options that you can put in here as a whole, uh, which means there are uh, four 3.5 inch hot swap drives that we'll show you in a minute. You actually can remove this panel and put four of them in. There's a uh, internal drive that is a five by quarter inch um, uh, internal slot for a drive. And you also have a flex bay that you can put in an M.2 NVMe drive, but you do need to have the flex bay uh, backplane and the adapter for that. And you can also technically for an M.2 NVMe, you can use a PCIe adapter. Um, so those are all the different potential storage options for the 5820 as a whole. So let's go over the hard drives to start. So uh, on the hard drive side, again, you will use a SATA hard drive. Uh, SAS requires a RAID controller. So realistically with this machine, what you will be using is a SATA hard drive. Um, and also make sure, because uh, solid state drives can come in SAS or SATA, make sure you get a SATA one as well. So these are just a few things to point out. But on the SATA side for hard drives, um, you can technically put a 2.5 inch drive in. There's not really a point in doing that, but if you did put a 2.5 inch drive in, the max that you're gonna get is two terabytes, okay? Whereas if you put a 3.5 inch drive, one of these large form factors, the max according to Dell's spec sheet is 12 terabytes. We've played around. You can't actually put a little bit higher in there. And I would love uh, to hear some comments down below on what you have successfully put in um, in your system. So have you put in a 20 terabyte, a 22 terabyte? Drop it down below, let everyone know uh, so they know exactly exactly how much they can put in with a large form factor drive. And honestly, that's the benefit of a large form factor drive is that you can get a much, much higher uh, terabyte as a whole on a price per terabyte. It's just gonna be way cheaper for a large form factor drive and you get more scalability. You can put in a 12 terabyte over a two terabyte, for instance, okay? We're now on the solid state drive side, the max that you're gonna actually be able to put in is 7.68 terabytes, okay? Um, now, that, that spec sheet doesn't actually say that you can do that, but you can. If someone's actually put in a 15 terabyte, do us a favor again, drop that down below. The highest that we've played around with and installed is uh, some 7.68 terabyte SATA enterprise drives. And that is a, another good point, is that you don't necessarily need enterprise drives with this machine, especially if this is just something that you're using at home, almost like a desktop and you're just browsing the internet. You can definitely get away with consumer drives. So if you go on our website and you're looking to buy upgrades, for instance, we have both options. We're gonna have enterprise drives and we're gonna have consumer drives and that can be confusing if you're not really sure what you need. And I would say if you're just using this for a desktop at home, save the money, buy the consumer drive, it'll work just fine. Now, if you're using this for you know something uh, way, uh, way more in depth, like somehow you've turned this into a mining machine or this is a gaming machine or you're running super complex algorithms on this or something crazy, that's when you're gonna want more of your enterprise drive as a whole. Uh, but again, for most users, you're probably just gonna want the consumer drives. And again, we have all those options on our website, okay? So um, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually, actually one last thing, let's go over the speeds. Um, so the speeds that you're gonna get on the, uh, the SATA side is going to be a 7.2K RPM. Uh, that's the you know, most typical. Technically there's some uh, other drives that are like uh, you know, your 10K uh, Raptor drives uh, and, and those are really kind of uncommon. The main drives that you're gonna get is going to be 7.2K with SATA. Whereas with the solid state drives, you're gonna get either three gigabit per second or six gigabit per second and that'll be the max that you can get on the uh, solid state drive side. All right, so now that we know a little bit more about the speeds, the sizes, what all is compatible, let's show you how to actually install these things and then we'll show you the inside and we'll actually do uh, some testing at the end as well. So let's hop in. All right, I put on my ESD gear just to be safe with handling the parts. So the first thing I wanted to zoom in was show you this little itty bitty button right here. And this is really important. You're gonna push this down and this is going to open the front. I'm sure this is actually gonna be one of the reasons people watch this video it is how do they get to the drives in the front? Well, that is how right there you push this button and this will come off. All right, so I wanted to change the view again. Just gonna push this little button right here and you will see this front plate will come off. And now we have access 
to our drives. So I left this hole empty right here because that's going to be uh, where we're going to install into. So let's say we were upgrading and we were putting in one of our solid state drives. So again, what we are doing here is we are um, using this converter and we'll show you that in a second, uh, how to make this work compared to a hard drive, okay? So once you have it uh, in the tray, you're just gonna simply slide it in. And this part's the nice, easy part. It literally just pops right in. That's how easy it is. It is a very, very easy install with the hot swaps. All you gotta do is just remove the front and pull your old drive out and put the new one in. It is a very, very easy install. I love hot swap for that reason because it is just so simple. So I'll actually show you now how to put this drive or put a solid state drive into this tray. All right, so let me show you just how easy and not so easy it is to put your solid state drive into this tray. So you will need your extra piece right here. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna take this black tip and you're gonna shove it into this hole and these uh, black pieces on the back here, there's a little itty bitty opening that's kind of hard to see that goes across this. So once you shove the tip in, you want to uh, have these black pieces all line up. So let me just show you how to do it. So take the tip, you're gonna put it in like this. And once you do it, it's gonna get stuck, okay? So the easiest way to do this, in my opinion, is to uh, come back here and actually start pushing on these black pieces to push them through. So I'll just start uh, kind of pushing them in like this, one at a time, to get them over. And then boom, we're locked into place. And now we have uh, everything set up. Actually, this one last piece didn't go over. So let me get this piece. And there we go. Now we are locked into place. And now that this piece is in, we can actually install our solid state drive. So just make sure that the uh, the SATA connector is opened up. You're just gonna come in here and the screw holes are gonna go into these blue pegs right here. So you're just gonna come in here and you're gonna put those two in to start on this side. And when you come down, and once you get to this point, it can be a little difficult. You'll notice that the two pieces don't go in so easy. So you do need to use a little bit of force. And again, you gotta be the right gentleness because you don't want to pull too hard and break it but this is flexible plastic so we're going to pull this just enough where we can slide that one in so that one's in now and then we're going to pull this one just enough where we can slide that one in and now we're fully in all four points are hooked in our tray is in and now we can install our solid state drive and we'll show you exactly how to do that so now what we're gonna do is show you how to test your drives with HD Sentinel. Uh, the way that we do it here, uh, we actually have a, a server that's hooked up to a storage array that allows us to test drives separately outside of our system. Um, and it'll basically be a great tool that's a separate tool from Dell's own testing tools that'll let you know the power on hours and the health score. So we'll show you how to do that right now. Alrighty guys, so I have HD Sentinel pulled up right now and as you can see we currently have two drives plugged in. Uh, we have this installed into a storage array where we like to plug in multiple drives at a time so we can test those drives. HD Sentinel is an awesome tool because you can see things like the power on hours, which is great, especially when you're buying used equipment. You can see how long that, that drive has been in use. You don't want to be using drives that have been you know, heavily used because then you have a higher risk of drive failure. Um, and that's one of the reasons why HD Sentinel is such a cool tool but as you can see we can just go ahead and plug a drive into the array and it'll automatically populate within the software and like I said lots of information it'll give you health scores of the drives as you can see the two we have up top they have a hundred percent health score while the one at the bottom has a 99 percent so all pretty good so I hope you guys found this video useful, and if you did, go ahead, smash the subscribe, and leave a like. If you're interested in purchasing a custom-built server, or you're looking to buy some drives, we do have plenty of those in stock, so you can go reach out to us at sales at cloudninjas.com. Sales at cloudninjas.com. Anyways, guys, thank you for stopping by.